Good morning and welcome to the Catechism in Two Full Months, as today we are on day four, as we are reading through um, article number three in the Augsburg Confession concerning the Son of God and the apology for that. Again, as I mentioned, apology isn't saying sorry, but being able to stand up to the things in which have been said about and to proclaim um, what you believe. Uh, and so that's what the apology is about. And so, like I said, uh, we are going through this Book of Concord um, in 62 days. My name is Pastor Jay Lutz, and we're going through these confessional writings put together by the Reformers um, in the Roman Catholic Church. Um, and <clears throat> now... These reformers have broken off into different churches. Um, the Lutheran Church is the one that uh, is known for the reformers writing the Book of Concord. And so we're going to be reading about the Son of God. Um, I thought an appropriate reading to um, speak to this is Hebrews chapter 1. In the past, God spoke to our forefathers through the prophets. At many times and in various ways, but in these last days, he has spoken to us by his son, whom he appointed heir of all things and through whom he made the universe. Remember in John, it says that he and the father co-created. The son is the radiance of God's glory and the exact representation of his being, sustaining all things by his powerful word. After he had provided purification for sins, in his death and resurrection, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty in heaven. So he became as much superior to the angels as the name he had inherited is superior to theirs. For to which of the angels did God ever say, You are my son, today I become your father. Or again, I will be his father and he will be my son. And again, when God brings his firstborn into the world, he says, Let all God's angels worship him. Speaking of the angels, he says, he makes his angels winds, his servants flames of fire. But about the sun, he says, your throne, O God, will last forever and ever, and righteousness will be the scepter of your kingdom. You have loved righteousness and hated wickedness. Therefore, God, your God, has set you above your companions by anointing you with the oil of joy. He also says, in the beginning, O Lord, you laid the foundations of the earth, and the heavens are the works of your hands. They will perish, but you remain. You will all wear out like a garment. You will roll them up like a robe. Like a garment they will be changed, but you remain the same, and your years will never end. To which of the angels did God ever say, Sit at my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet? Are not all angels ministering spirits sent to serve those who will inherit salvation? There ends our reading. So, yeah, the passage there talks about how... Um, Many places throughout the Bible, whether we're talking about Second Samuel, First Chronicles, Deuteronomy, uh, throughout the Psalms, uh, the Son of Man is talked about specifically. That is, He is above the angels. Um, and here uh, we see the writer of Hebrews talks about how the Son is the radiance, the glory of God, and the exact representation of who God is, sustaining His. Uh, who he is through the words that he speaks and the actions that he does because he dies on the cross, which purifies for the sins of all. And then it says he, be, then he sits down at the end at the right hand of the father, as it says in the, in the Psalms where it says, sit at my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet. So we see, uh, we see this all tied in nicely together in the first chapter of Hebrews. So, what do the Reformers have to say about concerning the Son of God? Well, in a very similar way that we see in Hebrews reading. It says, uh, Likewise, they teach that the Word, that is, the Son of God, took upon himself human nature in the womb of the Blessed Virgin Mary, so that there might be two natures, divine and human, inseparable, conjoined in the unity of one person, one Christ, Truly God and truly a human, being born of the Virgin Mary, who truly suffered, was crucified, died, and was buried, that he might reconcile the Father to us and be a sacrifice, not only for 
original guilt, but also for all actual sins of human beings. He also descended into hell, and on the third day he was truly resurrected. Therefore he ascended into heaven in order to sit at the right hand of the Father, and he will reign forever and have dominion over all creatures. He will sanctify, so make holy, those who believe in him by sending into their hearts the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit sanctifies, makes people holy. Who will rule, console, and make them alive, and defend them against the devil and the power of sin. So I think that's important repeating. The Holy Spirit, who will rule, console, and make them alive, and defend them against the devil and the power of sin. That is the power of the Holy Spirit. The same Christ will publicly return to judge the living and the dead, according to the Apostles' Creed. So that's what we see. Um, their confession of concerning the Son of God in the Augsburg Confession. And now let's see what um, reaction they got to the Roman Catholic um, Church. Um, and what did they have to defend against? Well, in Article 3 of the Apology, it says, The opponents approve the third article, in which we confess that there are two natures in Christ, namely that the human nature was assumed by the word, into the unity of his person, and that this same Christ suffered and died in order to reconcile the Father to us, and rose from the dead in order to rule over, justify, and sanctify believers, according to the Apostles' Creed and the Nicene Creed. So, this is great. Um, there is no, there didn't, doesn't seem to be any um, problem between the Roman Catholics and um, these reformers. And so we, we see it's, um, yeah, this this is laid out quite quite clear. Uh, but we just uh, we just thank God for the reformers uh, and, and critics uh, that they uh, came together to show the, that Jesus truly is the Son of God, that he is, um, as we see in Hebrew, superior to the angels, and yet he has provided for us um, an exact representation of God uh, on earth and that we we can walk in his ways at, and that we can aspire to be like Christ uh, following in his ways, not in the ways that the devil or the serpent in the garden wanted. The devil or serpent in the garden wanted us to be like God by being disobedient to God, by eating from the tree in which we were told not to do. Uh, the devil always tried to convince us that we are to be, in order to be like God, we are to be disobedient of God and do our own thing and be our own people. Uh, this is a, a misinterpretation, a mistranslation of God's words. And it's, it's not just that, but it's evil. The intention is evil and the devil strives to do things that are evil. And so we are to protect ourselves against the evil one and his lies and not give in to those lies that we, in order to be like God, we would be disobedient to God, but that we might follow in the ways of Christ, that we might ask for his Holy Spirit to enter into us, and that he might make his home within us, uh, as it says, as I read earlier, that in order that we might um, share in that goodness of God, that we that the Holy Spirit might rule, console, um, and make us alive, that we might be defended against the devil and the power of sin and evil. God, thanks be to God for that. Let us give thanks to God in prayer. Let us pray. Dear only God, we thank you for this day. We thank you that you have showed us through your words um, what it is uh, to, to stand boldly, to know who is the Son of God, that he is both divine and human, and that he was sent on earth in order that we might be saved, that he justifies us by his actions, uh, that he sets us anew and free through his death and resurrection, and that by his him believing and us having the Holy Spirit, uh, we might be um, sanctified, that we might be made alive, and that he might help us to be protected against evil, that we might flourish, and, and we might do the will of God on earth as it is in heaven. Thank you for this, O oh God. Thank you for your blessing upon our lives. Thank you for being with us and guarding and protecting us through all we do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you for joining me today.
Be a blessed day.